Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's webinar on e-referrals and best practice. We thank you for taking the time out of your evenings to join us tonight. My name is Angela Heathcote. I'm from Eastern Melbourne Primary Health Network. We welcome our guest speakers tonight, Eric Dunn and Carmel Servant from SR Specialists and Referrals. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Wurundjeri people and other peoples of the Kulin Nation as the traditional owners of the land on which our work in the community takes place. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. We recognise and value the knowledge and wisdom of people with lived experience, their supporters and the practitioners who work with them. We celebrate their strengths and resilience in facing the challenges associated with their recovery and acknowledge the important contribution that they make to the development and delivery of health and community services. Eastern Melbourne Primary Health Network is primarily funded by the Australian Government to improve the care and support people receive from health services. We aim to improve the health of our community, which also includes technology to make the broader health system work more efficiently. In tonight's session, our guest speakers will demonstrate how to easily send electronic referrals and best practice to private specialists. Before we begin tonight, just to let you know that we are all on mute, you can at any time ask questions by typing them in the chat box. For those questions not covered in the presentation, our guest speakers will be more than happy to answer these at the end of the presentation. Tonight's webinar is being recorded and all attendees will receive an email copy of this recording at the end of tonight's session. Um, without further ado, I'd like to hand over to our speaker, Eric Dunn, to begin. So thank you, Eric. Thank you, Angela. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Eric Dunn and I'm the presenter for this evening. I also would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples who may be on the call this evening. A quick bit about me. I've been in information technology for over 20 years, the last nine in digital health, most recently four years as the digital health manager at the Sydney North Health Network. I now help specialists and GPs with the e-referrals at SR. Tonight, I have Dr. Carmel Servan from SR Specialists and Referrals to help with the demonstration and answer questions. Welcome, Carmel. So tonight, we're going to talk about the existing referral process, how we've collaborated with other businesses to make the e-referral process easy, why you should use SR Referral, why you're probably already live with SR Referral and how easy it is to get set up if you're not, then I'll do a demonstration on SR referrals in best practice and a quick look at what the specialists see when they receive an e-referral in Genie. Then a section on how we can help and an opportunity to get your, your questions answered. With questions, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. You can open it now and type questions as we go through the webinar. Please don't be shy with questions. Feel free to type your questions as we go along as there, as there will be a thorough discussion at the end of the demonstration. All the handouts and the recording will be sent to everyone after the event. So by the existing referral process, I'm talking about letters, faxes and emails. With faxes, how do you know if the whole fax went through with all the attachments? With email, how do you know if the attachments got stripped out or if it went into the spam folder? Did it even go to the right person? Referrals that go to a practice where a specialist no longer works will mean spending extra time following up and sending it to the correct practice or contacting and finding another specialist for the patient. Where do you find the specialist? And how do the specialists find the referrals? Is it easier to just ask the GP to refax it when the patient turns up. There's a huge amount of time spent scanning paper, paper documents, both at GP practices and specialist practices. Attaching scanned documents to patient information in the clinical system, following up that the referral has been received and retyping patient information. I've had clinicians express to me their frustrations with the time spent on administration, not to mention the frustrations of the administration staff. GPs and specialists have had secure messaging systems for years. So why no e-referrals? Well, possibly because there are multiple directories. Each hospital has its own directory. 
There are paper directories and online directories. There are multiple secure messaging providers. So how do you know which one is being used by the receiving specialist? Specialists move around between hospitals and practices. GPs have multiple templates for different systems for different specialists, out of date templates that need changing or just don't work. And you have to know all of this before you even start an e-referral. So the system is unworkable. It's easier to just send it by fax and deal with the fallout from that. So what have we done about it? Servant Media have collaborated with HealthLink to provide an end-to-end -end solution for e-referrals called SR Specialists and Referrals. SR Specialists and Referrals is the online version of the printed directories integrated into your practice software and linked to HealthLink smart forms to securely and seamlessly allow e-referrals. So here's Carmel to talk about Servant Media and the collaboration with HealthLink. Thank you, so, Eric. There you go, Carmel. Yep. You're there. Thank you. Good. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, so this is uh, Servant Media is a family business. It was actually started by my parents so 30 odd years ago. And um, we've been publishing in New Zealand and Australia. And the directories that we publish are updated continually. So we obviously going to print puts a certain discipline on us and we have to make sure that we have all our information accurate before we go to print. But of course, now that we're online, we're updating that information all the time online as well. So it's a really main focus of our directories to keep that information up to date for you. Um, we publish across Victoria, Tasmania, New South Wales and ACT. And we also launched the SR service in New Zealand back in 2015. And that has become the main way that GPs are referring to private specialists in New Zealand now. So we're, we know we're onto a tool that works well, and we're very keen to support the adoption of it in Australia also. Um, we've obviously partnered with HealthLink, and that's to enable the secure messaging and the referral form to go through. Um, and I'll talk about that now. <laughs> Just roll through to... So HealthLink is um, the secure messaging service. A lot of you will be already familiar with it. And it's used for a number of smart forms now as well. And so our SR referral form follows the same format as the other smart forms. So it's a consistent workflow there to make it easier to, to get familiar with the process. Um, it's free for specialists to register for a HealthLink EDI address. And it's also free for all GPs to send referrals through SR to specialists and for GPs to receive them. So there's basically no barrier of entry for the specialist to be set up and, and there's no cost for them to be included in the directory as well. Um, they have a choice, the specialists, if they choose to publish more information in the directory, but um, we're very much um, hot on the trail and making sure that we've got everyone in there for you. So that's our main focus. Um, we've been doing it for quite a few years, so it's something that we spend a lot of energy on. Um, the setup is integrated at the specialist end into uh, their software as well and if the either if the specialist either does not have compatible software with HealthLink smart forms or if they are um, uh, don't have software at all then they've still got access to receive the referrals through the portal account which is a browser based version that HealthLink have as well um, yeah so that's in a nutshell and welcome any further questions on that at the end and back to you Eric Thank you, Carmel. So, why SR referrals? Well, we've streamlined the process of referral end to end. With faxes, the GP doesn't always send the fax. Typically, it goes to the admin staff to manage. With SR, the GP sends the referral directly from their clinical software. The referral contains all the pertinent information on the patient that can be directly imported into the specialist software. We'll show you how this works in a minute. You only need to look up one directory for all specialists because it's always up to date and clearly identifies the referral pathways. There is one template for all referrals, both electronic and manually by fax. It meets the requirements for GP accreditation and EPIP, and you can provide the patient with information about the specialist on the spot in a format that suits the patient. 
We'll also show you this in a minute. For specialists, there is less printing, scanning, and data entry. The e-referral is received straight away. It's easier to find, and there is more information about the patient, which can be automatically imported into their software. We'll show you how this happens. It's very easy for specialists to update their information in the directory. So as the specialists transition from manual to e-referrals, you'll see the updated information in your software immediately. We'll show you that in the demonstration. So you're already live with SR. If you have HealthLink and best practice or medical director, you are live for SR and there's nothing to do but use it. I'm about to show you how, and if you need additional support and training, our contact details will be at the end of the webinar. If you have HealthLink and other software and your software is compatible with HealthLink smart forms, then you can receive e-referrals and send via secure messaging. In this case, you can still contact us for support and training. If you don't have HealthLink, you can register for a free HealthLink EDI address. If you are, are, if you are on compatible software, then Health, HealthLink will remote in to set up your messaging. If you're not on compatible software, then you can be set up with a portal account. So let's see how easy it is to use SR. I'm going to demonstrate how to find the SR smart form in best practice, how to navigate the directory and find the specialist you want, how to create and send the referral or park it while you wait for results, and what the referral looks like when they arrive with the specialist, linking the referral to an existing patient and creating a new patient from the referral. So let's get into it. Okay, so I've got um, best practice here. This is um, a demo version of best practice. And I'm going to start by opening a patient. Uh, our test patient, believe it or not, is called test patient. And as you can see, uh, it, we've got in our correspondence out, um, I've been sending quite a few um, referrals for this patient. Um, and what I'm going to do is open, uh, go to view, HealthLink forms, and here we can see all of the HealthLink forms that have been used up to date. And then I'm going to start a new one. And in here, we can see all the referred services. So these are all the smart forms that are available with HealthLink at the moment. And at the top here is specialists and referrals. So to create a new referral, we click on that link, and then it opens the specialists and referrals screen. I'll just make that a bit bigger. And at the top here, we have the search area for searching for specialists. And as you go down, you can see the recently profiled specialists who've come on, just come on board. Um, and then there's a video guide to help you with if you forget how to use it. And down the bottom, all of our support contact details, the phone number, the email, and the website. Um, and on the left here, we can see there are frequently used recent searches and recent profiles. So if you happen to know the name of the specialist, you can just type that straight in. So I'm going to go with uh, Phil Dundee. Whoops, Dundee. And there he is, Phil Dundee in neurology and go search. And there's Phil. Phil. Uh, and one of the things that I can do is it fills the, spe the specialist that I want. I've got his um, profile open at the moment, and I can email that information directly to the patient. So if I click on email patient, it brings up this form, and I can put in, I'll put in my email address and send an email. And what this does is it sends the email from SR referrals doesn't use your email address. So you're not exposing your private data to anyone. And then we can, the patient can access the profile on ozhealthpages.com.au. So I'll just copy that and go to a web browser. And there is Oz Health Pages. And Oz Health Pages is the same database that's in your software. So um, the, uh, the patient can look up the, uh, the uh, specialist there. And also, 
we can see what that looks like when it comes out at the other end. So uh, if I just go into my email, I should have an email from specialists and referral service information on Phil Dundee from your doctor. So if I open that email, it shows me uh, that the GPS sent this to me and then I can click on this and get the listing for Phil and this is what the patient sees. When that comes through on their phone, they can just click on the phone number of the specialist to phone and book their appointment. Couldn't be easier. And what I've managed to do is to close the patient. So I'll just open a new form. Sorry, not close the patient, but I've closed the form. So I'll just open that again and start a new referral. And in this time, they say I don't know what the specialist's name is, but I want to search in a category, for instance, general surgery. And I search the specialists for general surgery, and this is giving me a list of um, all general surgery. And you can see at the top here it's got 399 results found. Um, but I'd like the ones for... Uh, Bandura in Victoria. So I'll search for that. And as you can see, I've got a number here. And I think the one that I'd like to use is uh, Takyong. And once again, if I don't want to uh, email the patient, I just want to give them a printout, then there's I can do the same thing here. I'll just do a printer handout for them. Or let's go back and say I want to make that, uh, let's talk endocrine surgery, and but I don't want Bandura. Let's go back. Okay, so general surgery, I want endocrine surgery. Um, Let's pick someone that does a manual referral. So perhaps Dr. Tracy Lamb, and I'll do a manual referral for Richmond. So a manual referral means they're not yet set up with HealthLink, uh, but more specialists are registering daily. So you'll see them change from electronic to manual over time. And so at the top of the referral, it says, only e-referrals support attachments. So this recipient is unable to receive referrals electronically, therefore manual referrals do not support attachments. So what I'm going to do is this referral without any attachments. And then when you would send it via your normal pathway, whether it be fax or email, then you can add the attachments in. The things that are required are in here, that has got a, an um, exclamation mark to say that there are certain things that are required and there's an asterisk next to the ones that are required. So these are all filled out, but the patient referral reason isn't. So I need to put something in there. I'll just put some letters in. Um, and then the rest of it gets populated automatically. Um, I can click on the classifications, etc., but none of that's going to get attached at this point. Um, and <clears throat> the patient information is automatically populated. The referrer information is automatically populated along with the telephone number, et cetera. So then what I can do is I can print that and it will print that to a PDF and it will save it um, where you have best practice set up to save the document. Uh, and I, then I can open the file and I can see the referral and there it is to Dr. Tracy Lamb. The patient is test patient and it's referred by Dr. Go Lucky in Melbourne. And so that's what I can then send. So that's a manual referral. So let's have a look at an electronic referral. So I'll just start a new one again. 
SR referrals. Now, because this system is live, I'm not going to try sending an e-referral to a specialist in the list. We have a test specialist called Dr. Ia Loeb. I think that's supposed to be funny. Um, and so I'll search for Dr. Loeb and search specialists. And now I can, there he is, and I can do an e-referral or a manual referral. I'm going to do an e-referral. I forgot to mention that while you're searching, you can also tick a box for um, urgent uh, specialist, somebody you need urgently, and it will um, refine the search down to urgent. In this case, the same thing. I need to put in the patient referral reason, and then I can add attachments. So I have an X-ray here that I can add and then it automatically populates any medications, allergies, alerts, and warnings. Um, then there's the, uh, the medical history, so long-term classifications, patient histories, etc. cetera. Uh, then the patient information, this is all automatically populated. Uh, and then the same thing with the referrer information, once again, automatically populated. So I can preview this before I send it, and here it comes up as a preview, but we won't see any of the attachments in a preview. It'll just say what the attachments are. And while I'm talking about attachments, I might go back and attach, browse for a local file. So I've got an attachment that I want to send that is, for instance, a pathology report, okay. I'll add that, upload it, so that it comes in here. And then I go, oh, I've got to wait for some more um, results to come in. So what I can do is I can park this. So it, well, I can park it and wait for later, or it's been successfully parked. And when I park it, when I come back after parking it, I have to reattach the... Um, the attachments. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to send it straight away. So I'll just submit it. And there we go. So at the top here, it says referral sent and acknowledged on the 5th of the 4th. So that means that it has been acknowledged as received by HealthLink. It doesn't necessarily mean that the specialist has seen it. And so that is done. I can also print it and give a copy to the patient or put it on file, whatever your workflow happens to be. Okay, the next bit, I would like to show you that arriving. So I sent that to a specialist with a portal account. So I'm just going to open the portal account, which is here, this one. So I'm logging into the portal account. And there it is. That's the one that I have just sent, I think. At 7.23 p.m. I open that. And this is what the specialist sees. So they get the referral with all of the pages. And there is the uh, pathology, two pages of pathology and an x-ray. Okay, so have I, I think I've covered everything so far. What do you think, Carmel? Have I missed anything? Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Um, just on the those images coming through, so at the moment, um, the attachments show, as you could see there, and what's received at the specialist end, but they're not being um, displayed in the copy that's saved within the GP software. Uh, the, the file references are included, but not the actual attachments themselves at the moment. HealthLink are working on changing that so that the GP copy will also include the actual attachment um, images that you've selected as well. So that's a change that will come through shortly because um, we've received a bit of feedback around that, obviously, and we're very looking forward to that um, change coming through. But you can definitely see that if it's included in the list, it has gone through to the specialist. Okay. 
We've got lots of questions coming through, so that's really exciting. Great. I'm looking forward to getting stuck into those soon. Yeah. So do you want to give us a look at what the, um, the specialist sees? Yes, I can do that. So I'll share my screen. Yep, you should be able to do that. So what you can see now is Genie software. So this is at the specialist end, and I've actually jumped ahead a little bit. I've gone into Genie, and I've gone open incoming letters. So this is the incoming letter screen here where uh, specialists can see letters or any other correspondence as well that they're receiving. They can choose um, to see all of the letters coming in, not just to a particular specialist name. So it's always a good idea. And at the moment, I've got the unlinked set displaying. So unlinked means that the letters come in, but they haven't yet gone through to either match it to an existing patient or to create a new patient. And that's what we'll, we'll do now is to quickly show you that process. So I'll start at the top. I've got a referral here that's come through to the patient Amanda Greenslade. It's been sent by test uh, referral GP earlier. And the specialist name that we're using here is actually Mickey Mouse. So earlobe and Mickey Mouse are two of our test specialists that you're welcome to use to have a go as well if you want to do a practice referral. Now, because there's green icons here, that means that the Genie software has found matching details for Amanda Greenslade. So it's looked at the information in the referral PDF and said, ah, that patient's a match with one already. And all the secretary or the specialist needs to do is go link and that has now linked that referral. We were just looking to the patient record. So on the patient record, that referral will now be displayed. Um, the next one I've gone to, it's automatically gone to the next in the series of letters. That's also a match. So again, I can go link and that's gone through. Now we've got to one where it hasn't found a match. So this time we've got a, a patient, Frederick Ford, and he's not yet in the database here. So there's an extra step to do which is to go and create a new patient. So I hit the new patient icon in Genie, and it's actually pulled through the details, the patient name, and any of the details that it can find on the referral PDF. So instead of the secretary having to manually type information in off a fax or um, re-enter it from an email, it's come through automatically creating the patient record. I can go save on that. And now the patient's on my, in my database here and I can just link that referral. So you can see how much easier it's going to make the life of the specialists and their staff to manage the referrals coming through. Um, of course, the other thing they can do is, is easily search on referrals. So say that sometimes they're very busy, the clinics, and they may choose not to create patient records until they know the patient's definitely coming. They can always go in and search through the incoming letters for the surname of the patient. And so that's, again, saving them time from waiting through a pile of faxes to see. <laughs> and, and the end game, of course, is so that they don't get the patient to phone the GP practice and say, please refax because it's already here. Um, so it it's, will take time. And we are uh, providing a lot of training at the specialist end as well. But um, we can see that this workflow is going to add a lot of benefit to both the specialist and the GP processing of referrals. So that's a very quick summary, um, but I'm keen to get into some of your questions. And I'll, so I'll hand back to Eric and he'll follow through with our final points on the presentation and then we'll be on question time. Eric. Right. Thank you, Carmel. So I'm just going to share my screen again. There we go. And just get back to my presentation. And away we go. So we provide extensive free training for your staff and are happy to contact the specialists you refer to so they can use SR as well. Whatever their workflow, we can help them integrate SR so you can both reap the benefits of electronic referrals that work. Our sole purpose is to help GPs and specialists, and we've been doing it for 30 years. We're sensitive to your requirements and admin processes, and our tools will make your life easier. Feel free to call or email us with queries or for training. Let us know if you have particular specialist practices that you would like to see shift from faxes to e-referrals.
Let us know and we can contact them and offer setup, support and training. Because the system is live, it, it, it updates instantly. So if a specialist joins or leaves the clinic, if they change their contact details, if they add or remove consult locations, or if they're doing telehealth consults, as soon as we know, you know. And finally, we help specialists by providing basic entries in the directory for free. Specialists can improve the visibility of their entries by including information on their services, their photo, and be listed under multiple categories. Paid entries are annual and are a package entry into the Medical Specialist Directory, SR and ozhealthpages.com.au. There is no charge for GPs to use this service. So that's about it um, for the presentation side. Thank you for your time. And I'll hand back to Angela and see if there's any questions for us. Thanks, Eric and Carmel. There's quite a few questions that have come through. So if you want to click on the uh, Q&A and maybe you can go through them with me as they've popped yeah. up. So uh, the first question that's come through is, do you require a signature on referrals or is a transmission of the e-referral enough? The transmission of the e-referral is enough. So um, part of the HealthLink setup is that it's an authorised um, communication and there's no additional signature required. So it's fine just sending it through the smart form and that's recognised as um, a, a equivalent of a signature document going through. So there's no issue there. Fantastic. Um, do you know approximately what percentage of specialists are using SR referrals? So we have, it's a, it's a two-way thing, obviously. Um, to be using SR referrals, they have to be sent a referral from a GP. So that's the number of specialists receiving is growing all the time. Uh, we have over half of the specialists set up with an e-refer address now. So that's also growing steadily. Um, it's not uncommon. A number of specialists are across multiple clinics and you'll see the multiple addresses there. Sometimes you'll see a mix. Some of their addresses will be electronic and some will be manual, just depending on um, whether the centre that, that they're based at has an EDI yet or not. So you will see a mix coming through. Um, yeah, so, it, but it, it is a moving target and obviously we're encouraging specialists as well to, to be set up electronically just to make that referral process easier. The reason why we include manual is because our directory is comprehensive and we want you to always be able to find your specialist and still do the referral process regardless of whether they're yet electronically set up or whether you still need to do it manually. We don't want you to get partway through and then have to back out and go somewhere else. It's it's a one-stop shop to do the referral is the goal. <laughs> so that's why we do it that way. Thanks, Carmel. Um, the next question is, the past history with HealthLink has been unpredictable in terms of e-translating active versus inactive and summary included versus non-summary included conditions. Is there any secrets to what conditions go in? I honestly don't know the answer to that question, but I would love to, <laughs> to find out more about it. Um, so uh, if you um, feel free to come back to me on that. And I'd be happy to share that with the rest of the group as well. So I'd probably need a little bit more understanding of exactly of the what's being referred to there. Yeah. Sure, no problems. Thanks, Carmel. Um, attachments were an issue with source document naming the attachments as confirmed by their megabyte or gigabyte size, yet receiving hospital specialists claiming their results may be less of an issue now. So I think that's to do with sizing of attachments yeah. there. So on the attachment screen where you go to to um, select an attachment, there are some criteria around the size and the type of files that can be included. So it, it does pay to look at that. And I understand that it's a cumulative limit. So um, depending on how many attachments you have and how big that overall package is um, can affect whether it will be completely accepted. If, if there's if the size is oversized, then you're going to get an error message and it won't go through. So you will know that there's a problem before it, it basically HealthLink won't send it through. Um, so, yeah, if we, um, I'm quite keen to get feedback if that's causing an ongoing problem. So by all means, at any point, if you have having difficulty with attachments, do reach out to us uh, because we're in very close contact with HealthLink over those details and they are making some changes to various settings. So I welcome any feedback on that so we know where to make improvements. Thanks, Carl. 
Uh, the next question, I had a doctor do a knee referral, but when I went to open that document in the patient's file as per patient's request, it opened, but there was no information to see. I could see we received an acknowledgement on the day that the referral was sent. Do you have any idea why would this would be? No, but I would. it would be very helpful to um, come back to us with that example yeah. and we can provide assistance. So um, our support desk works closely with HealthLink and we refer on queries where we need HealthLink to investigate further and we work with them to make sure that that gets resolved. Um, so by all means, um, come back to us on the detail of that particular referral and we, we can try and assist. Sure. Um, when a referral is sent and no response at the other end, seemingly common in COVID, one might want to be keen to resend with some choice comments or how to add to it. How do we resend an old referral with editing? Is there a cut and paste ability? So you may have spotted there in the, in the list of all the practice ones that Eric can, has been doing that we can see the earlier referrals that have been sent for that patient. So in theory, it's possible to select one of those earlier documents and include it. Um, obviously, the only challenge is if information on the patient record has changed in the meantime, so you probably do need to keep a close eye on that. And it is always going to expect you to put something in that reason for referral field. Um, in terms of specialist busyness, yes, it's a known fact that specialist clinics are very busy at the moment, um, just like GP clinics are, I'm sure. Um, so what we do recommend is for any urgent referrals where you've got particular concern for the patient, obviously best practice would be to reach out and make contact directly with the specialist to make sure that they have spotted that referral come through and it's you know being prioritised and what they're responding to. Um, yeah, but it is it's there is variation in, in how busy some of the specialist clinics are, and if you're finding that um, there's specialists that are saying to refax or you think there's an issue, by all means let us know and we'll make contact and offer more training there. That's something we are doing very proactively at the moment. Thanks, Carl. Uh, another question, how do you attach results which are in the incorrect format? So I think this is coming back to what you are saying with the requirements with attachments before. Yeah, if, if there's still a problem there, do contact us and we'd like to look into that for you, definitely. Thank you. Um, uh, next one, there's a lot of questions tonight. Yeah. Um, we, yeah, we find a good percentage of correspondence coming back to us doesn't have the referring doctor's name on it. This then means I need to look to see who the patient's GP is. Is there a way that the referring GP's details automatically get included in the correspondence that the specialist is sending back to us? So this correspondence that the specialist sends back at the moment is not part of the smart form or any um, process that's structured by HealthLink. So it's really up to the letter that the specialist has as their own format. Um, so that, but that is useful feedback to have. And that is something that we could talk to HealthLink about in terms of if there is the ability to put any more structured communication in place of the reply end. Um, yeah, so welcome suggestions around that. Um, just while we're on suggestions, um, one question that I had of people and, and would welcome if you want to put a note up is um, in the reason for referral field, at the moment, it's just a free text field for you to start typing in what you're referring the patient for. Um, in our New Zealand version, we actually have that text defaulting in with some letter format. So it says, dear Mr. Specialist, and thank you for... Um, seeing my patient so-and-so or you know, you know just a short one sentence blurb and then a sign off um, so one thing I've been wondering is whether GPs would like to have that um, letter format incorporated into that reason for referral text box whether that would save you time whether that's something that you'd like um, let me know <laughs> so it's on my list of things to give uh, health link feedback on so we're continuing to make changes to the form Thanks, Carmel. There's a question here. Is there a fee for specialists to receive e-referrals? No, definitely not. So all referrals go through at no cost to the specialists. And there's a number of reasons for that. Um, obviously, not all referrals result in the specialist seeing that patient. Um, and obviously, we're encouraging specialists to receive referrals electronically. So we don't want to put a barrier up for them to be part of the um, service. Uh, so 
yeah, there's no fee for that. Our model has always been more advertising based. So for the specialists that choose to promote, that's what funds the the SR directory service. Uh, next question: Do confidential parts of the past medical history automatically get attached into the referral letter? I don't know the answer to that. Actually, I'll... they don't. Ah, I don't good. think so. <laughs> no, so you you choose what past medical history gets attached. So that as you go through the um, the process you get to say what what goes in and what doesn't. So if you've got stuff that's in your uh, patient file that's marked as confidential, then it doesn't get added in. Do, I will, and, and, I, and I'll double check on that just yeah. to make sure. Yeah, we will double check. Um, yeah, so there is the option with all, all of the sections on the form, there's the option to turn, off, turn on or off. Some sections do default on. Um, so I will double will double check with Healthlink just to check um, exactly what's happening with any of the confidential flags to, to come back on that. Thanks, yep. Carmel. We've got one last question here, and I think I may uh, get it wrong, but uh, bear with me as I try and read it out for you. Could we possibly bring up that example referral and confirm number of tabs in medicines listed but no strengths of tabs? Does that make sense, that question to you? I'm sorry if I've got that incorrect um, for the person who asked that question. Is that to do with the medications being listed, but the um, yeah, the strength of the medication not displaying? Is that what you're is being I'm, asked about? I'm there? not sure okay. quite there. And we can't unmute, unfortunately, because we are um, recording this session today. So I think what's most important is that we are having, um, oh, there we go. Uh, here we go. Specialists from TNH commented on letter that dose of metformin not given to her. Number of tabs, but no strength as in message. MG, sorry. Can you see those questions there, Carmel, the very yep. last one that's come through? Yep. Um, so I'm not sure. Eric, if you share your screen again. And go back and I'm not sure if the example, because we've only got dummy data, whether we've got dose on our patient data or not, but we should have a quick look. Can you see that? Yep. So if you go to the medications on the patient. I don't have any medications in on this patient. At all? As a test patient. I don't think yeah. so. No. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll need to check on that then. I would yeah. expect the dose information to be there. Um, so it may just be not displaying because of a lack of data on our test patient. But I can check that and come back to you on it. Definitely. Um, well, thank you, Carmel and Eric. That's most of the questions for tonight. Um, just to let everybody know, at the end of today's session, when you close off the session, there is going to be a survey that pops up and there is an opportunity for you to either put a request in for extra training or support from Eric and, and Carmel and their team. Or also, if you do have extra questions that we haven't been able to answer in this session, please pop them in there for feedback. And Eric and Carmel will be more than happy to direct those questions back to you directly. Um, if there's anything that's going to be significant to the wider group, we'll also share that in our email correspondence after tonight's event. So I'd like to thank Eric and Carmel for their time tonight in presenting uh, to, on uh, BP um, and would like to thank you all for your time with um, spending the time with us tonight. So thank you and all good night. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.